Hello everyone, my name is Hasten Dias and you are at Basic Marine Engineering. Today we are going to discuss about crankcase explosion. Uh, so for those who guys who don't know what is crankcase explosion, make sure you see the entire video. I have done a lot of technical videos, explanatory videos and uh, if you have not seen, you can go through my other videos, you will find them interesting. If not, you can always mention down what don't you like and what you liked about. I always like to do some improvements about myself and about the content. You can also join me on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, on Instagram, sometimes after the videos, I have started a new thing on my Instagram page. Uh, after my videos, I do put one small quiz. You can check it in my story and you can answer. It is a just good way to know whether whatever you have seen in the video, whether you have understood it properly or not. For any kind of fire, you know, to understand fire, for any kind of fire, we always know about the fire triangle. You know, we have air, we have fuel and a heat source. Okay. And these three things come together. We are going to have a fire. Now, inside our crankcase, we have the air. We also have the fuel and we only need a heat source. Okay. So for any, any kind of fire, as we know, we need a heat source. And same way in the crankcase explosion, everything will start with a heat source. Now, heat source can be caused because of improper lubrication, because of metal to metal contact. So it can be any way, it can be your piston rod gland uh, or piston rod stuffing box. It can be your cross head and your shoe guides where the movement is taking place. It can be the bearings, it can be the chain, you know, it can be the gears. So any place where we have a heat source been generated, okay, that will be the first step which is going to happen. So once a heat source is generated, we have everywhere oil is getting splashed. So what is going to happen because of the splashing? First of all, it is broken down into smaller particles because it is getting splashed. And once it reaches the heat source, you know, it will be vaporized. Now, once this vapor goes to a colder area, there we have the first oil mist getting generated. Now, oil mist, once it's get generated, basically it's kind of a white mist. So this mist, you know, will start getting accumulated and once it gets accumulated in air fuel ratio and once that ratio goes about the lowermost explosion range and this mist, once it reaches to your heat source, will cause the explosion. Now this explosion will be called as the primary explosion. Now you have to understand in this area, it will happen like, you know, the the ratio which might be there or the fuel which might be there will be a lot quantity okay in comparison to the air now everything might not be converted into mist but when the first explosion will take place with that heat you know more oil will get evaporated and secondly because of the first explosion there will be a pressure rise and this pressure rise is going to rupture your crankcase now once the crankcase get ruptured that will draw in more air okay that is going to bring in more air and that is going to create your second second explosion and that will be called as your secondary explosion and that explosion will be very big it will be very severe and this explosion can damage all the machineries around there it can injure people it can kill people you know the explosion can be very big our crankcase is a very big no, it's not a small, it's like a big hall, you know, you can see. And the amount of oil which is there is very a lot. So you have to understand that the consequences will be very, very severe. And for that reasons, we have some safety has been provided. First of all, we have the your relief door, your crankcase relief door. Now that is set at a pressure of around 0 0.4, 0 0.5 bar. So any pressure above that, it will open up, it will release the pressure. And then it will close. It will not allow any air to end, you know, enter back inside. So that is your one of the safeties. Your second safety is your oil mist detector. Now, what the oil mist detector does? Basically, it is measuring your mist. How much is your mist being generated? So from each and every unit, it is continuously drawing the air sample, and it is measuring. Now, when an oil mist alarm is activated, the step first step should be, you know to basically slow down and stop the engine allow the lubrication we have to stop the heat source that is the prime thing 
okay and nowadays you know any manufacturer which is there he will mention that after you have found the alarm has been raised you know you have found the oil mist alarm everyone has to evacuate the engine room only two people will be standing or will be waiting inside your control room to monitor whether the alarm is reducing or not there is no second thought on that like you know you have to go and cross check no you do, you cannot you know that is that has to be followed as you have to take into consideration that explosion can take place and if you go to cross check there it can happen the explosion might take place so whenever an oil mist detector senses mist that means you know it is still very early it is not gone to that ratio where you know an explosion can take place it is very early so this will prevent an explosion entirely so oil mist detector is a very good thing and many a times you have to you know check the alarms regularly you will have to check the alarms of the oil mist detector just to make sure it is working fine okay and also you have to do maintenance of your uh, crankcase relief doors so that you keep them in good condition okay so i hope you guys have understood what i have told you all okay in simple words we have the hot spot which creates the oil vapors okay and when it condenses somewhere in the cooled area we will have the mist forming once the mist is formed it will gather up the ratio will increase it goes to the hot spot primary explosion takes place heat is generated with that more vapors are created with the pressure there is a possibility of the you know the crank is getting ruptured when that happens you have more air coming in more fuel is already present when more air comes in that will create the secondary explosion i hope you guys have understood this and if you have any doubt you can mention down if you have uh, if i have uh, missed out anything still you can write down and you can follow me as i said earlier you can follow me on my instagram and uh, i have mentioned the link uh, link below and wait for the story you will you will get a small quiz do answer it and make yourself feel good till my next video thank you best of luck and be safe